Good evening and welcome to the Town of Proctor Select Board meeting for May 13th. If you'd all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the first order of business is re review and approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, and the approval of the April 22nd select board meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Open public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? I'll always my later. Hey. Well. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have Jeff Lewis and Wayne um, to talk to us about the wastewater treatment facility upgrade and the lead service line inventory. Good evening, Ezra. Oh, good evening. Um, so we have the pleasure of joining you on February 12th um, to discuss something very similar with the wastewater treatment facility project. Um, at that time, we had given you guys the engineering service agreement. I know that there are a couple of new faces on the board from, from that point, and we now have have approval from the state to sign that engineering services we're gonna get going on step two services. Um, so we, we wanted to make sure that we made ourselves available for any questions that you guys had on the project or anything um, related to that. I'm also not looking to waste your time, so if you'd like to go over that project, and I, I would be happy to go through a very similar spiel to what I did in February or kind of open it up to you guys for questions as far as whichever you guys are preferred. So with respect to the wastewater treatment facility? With respect to the wastewater treatment facility. So yeah, so I think, I, I don't know that we need to go over um, what had been gone over before. I think that um, the board would like to um, kind of know more maybe the timeline, like what we're looking at if, or, the expectation is we're going to bond next March, or? That's a, that's a great expectation. I'm happy with that one. Um, <laughs> that's actually up to you guys. Um, you, you can kind of work at that on your own schedule. Okay, so that I guess that's the, be, the yeah. kind of the baseline because I feel like as someone who's new to the board but has been in the room always, um, maybe the conversation has not been as robust about this project so if I feel that way, as someone who sat in the corner and was recording minutes, yes. people that just live in the community probably feel more so that way. So to have a positive bond vote, yep. people need to understand, one, what the issue is, why it's dire that we're doing that, um, and you know, this pretty substantial cost that, that's been um, thrown around. Yep. So. I guess with respect to the timeline, if we said um, March was the timeline, what would that look like in <laughs> retrospect for like community forums, you know, um, a flyer, things like that, to share that information and get it out to the public? I think we talked about a November timeframe to getting having a community okay. um, meeting and then getting yeah. out to the. However, um, yes. Um, it has taken a little bit longer to get this under contract than we were originally hoping that it would. So with where we're currently at, in order to get something on for, and to include the amount of public engagement that you're discussing, it would be a difficult, a, a difficult road to hoe to kind of, if you guys would like to <coughs> remember, it's not technically impossible, but I think that it might be more realistic to kind of push for the March timeframe would be, it would be a better timeframe for getting this as a, as a bond item at this, at this point. Um, so I guess, I guess in terms, I don't know if you're thinking the same thing, but if we go out to vote in March for the bond, should we have the meeting much earlier than that, just so people have kind of time to listen, digest, and 
Any other yes, we would usually start that process about eight, six to eight weeks. I mean, with the November election, things may be a little bit different. Things may need to start early in August. So let's say, for example, if you wanted to start that process next March, you know, you need to do the 30 days. We would probably start, you know, coordinating with you and your bond council six to eight weeks ahead of time. And that usually works out to be enough. You know, you need to have at least one public hearing within 10 days of the vote. Right. You can actually have a second one if you have more, um, but we're you know there to assist with doing presentations at the bongo hearings, putting a flyer together, you know, other things you know from a public education outreach kind of thing. So yeah, I think what Jeff took maybe a little bit about the schedule. Losing these months has been pretty critical. Um, to try to get, even if we started on the design over the next couple of months, by the time we do to try to get something through to construction for next mm -hmm. year. So doing a November bond vote isn't quite as critical. The other thing we're still anxiously waiting on is the state is, have not lists issued their draft. We call it intended use plan, which is their fundable project list. We're anxiously waiting for that. Um, and that starts effective July 1st, but we're still waiting for that. So we don't know if you wanted to just use the state clean water program, we don't know where your project lies on that list right now anyways. Um, and the other thing too is if you're interested in applying for USDA funding, you know, that deadline is really mid-December, so you want to start that a couple months before. Um, you will have to have a positive bond vote before they will issue a funding offer, so that's going to make it again tough to get to construction next year, but that all works. It's really up to the pleasure of the board if that kind of timeline and schedule works so i guess what i'm looking for more is just <clears throat> a general overview about the project that we could start putting out there now i think if you walk down the street and started talking to people about this the general public doesn't know that this is um up for a bond vote, so to speak. And, um, you know, the last time we had a bond vote <clears throat> for the water projects, it was pretty controversial and had a lot of back and forth. And I, I understand, like, the parameters, <clears throat> you know, prior to the bond vote, but I think it's better to get information out now and start engaging people now. So even if we just have, you know, like, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, this is, you know, we are anticipating a March bond vote. You know, not a huge thing that we can put on the website, maybe throw out to the local Brandon reporter, things like that, um, just to put up, even post and put up around town. So people don't feel like all of a sudden it's like, a bond vote? What are you talking about? No one's even talked about there's a problem with the wastewater treatment plant. Um, yes, so I, I can pull together what you're requesting okay. as far as that information goes. Okay. And, and we can we can help you get that get that word out there. Um, as far as directly answering the question, I feel like I, I just wanted to, I, it sounds like you're familiar with the project, so it doesn't sound like I need to get into any of the details right now, you just would like to have something available for me. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, sorry. Yes, uh, you know, I'm looking at the wastewater treatment facility preliminary engineering report, and on page 43, table 7.3, SRE funded implementation schedule. Is that schedule no longer applicable? That's and it. if not, why wasn't that updated? So that report, I think, was given to you guys in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. That, that so November 2023. November 2023, yeah. Which, which one was I talking about? Yeah, so the PR. The PR, um, yes. So what happened was from that report till now, we prepared, you guys had a, a change in your town manager um, that, that added a little bit of time as far as getting this project from step one into step two. We didn't want to jump immediately. I think there was a transition period where that caused a little bit of a delay kind of jumping into the step two. And then following that, we prepared an ESA that had been with the state um, for review in order for you guys to go through the SRF program. It requires the SRF <coughs> engineers to review the, the engineering service agreement. Um, that had sat with them, I think, for, for almost a month and a half by the time we sat with you guys in February. 
and it wasn't approved until a couple of weeks ago, which is why I immediately reached out to Judy and was like, "Where can I get on your next select board meeting so we finally got that approval? So um, there is a gap in there as far as what the timing is at this point, and that's largely attributable to the very long review time of ESA and you guys having a change, a kind of change in your town manager in the interim is what I, is what I changed that as. Um, I know that the town manager was in place by the time that report was finished. I didn't want to finalize the, the report until I had a chance to get Judy up to speed as far as what was in that report. So that's kind of what the, the, timeline, the timeline transition is there. But it's a fair question. But yeah, you're, you're pushed back from that original timeline. But the steps will be the same? Steps will be exactly the same. Okay. Um, if you guys would like to get ahead, if, we, if we're pushing things back and if you guys wanted to try to more, one of the one of the primary needs of the wastewater treatment facility is the sludge cleanout that's not being completed. And sludge cleanout is very difficult and expensive. That's a, that's a very large part of the cost that's in that, in, the, in that project. Um, we can kind of work through exactly what works <coughs> for the town and how you guys want to attack this. But you could theoretically address sludge cleanup prior to doing the full upgrade project if you guys were really eager to get in there and get something done. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be the full recommendation, but that's an option available to the board if that's how you guys want to approach this. Yeah, that could still happen next summer, wait, next summer, for example. If you had a positive bond vote in March and all the funding was in place, uh, the contractors that do that type of work are very, very limited. You know, they're booked out. You know, like for this year, you couldn't even get them to show up. So it's important to get some of that kind of stuff on their schedule, you know, sooner than later. So part of what we're trying to do here is we want to time things to coincide well with your schedule as far as getting into the mon March bond vote. We want to coincide the schedule with USDA as a possible funding source, make sure that they have time to review things. And we want to kind of coordinate the, the final bidding document with what's kind of the, the sweet spot for contractor bidding windows. Um, so part of why it makes sense to kind of push everything back is not, you don't want to put something out to bid when everybody has work. So part of what we'll do is we're kind of going through and getting an updated schedule for you is make sure that we're hitting one of those preferable bidding windows for you as well so that we're not putting the project out and giving the town a putting the town at an immediate disadvantage because everybody already has work. So um, we'll, we'll continue to work through and get it. Once we get going on this, once we can finally start getting our feet behind us and, and see how things are moving forward, we'll, we'll update our schedule and give you guys a, a, a better a better look forward as far as what things are going to look like. We do have a couple of grants out there that we've applied for for this project um, that, you know, of course we haven't heard from them yet, so yep. that would kind of help us down the road better too, so. Yep, and, and the major programs of the SRF program, which you guys are in line for, <laughs> which that's the IUP that Wayne was talking about, and intend to use plan that Wayne was talking about that list coming out and seeing where you guys fall on it. Yeah and the USDA Rural Development Program, which we tried to get an application in for at the end of last year, and there, were, there was a problem in getting that to go through their system. So I think with a full with a full head start, we should have no problem doing that in December of this year. Um, so yeah, continuing just trying to make sure we're not setting you guys up in, in, a, in an inopportune situation when we go for this project. What are those other two funding? Is one of those northern borders, Julie, or? I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, one of them is through the Rutland Regional Planning, and that was okay. more a technical a okay. grant to kind of help with the guys, okay. and the other was congressional funds. For our okay. yeah. So it's possible that <clears throat> if things are moving along, we could even do <clears throat> maybe a February vote because we don't have to do it as a town meeting vote. It's a separate vote, floor vote, anyway, right? You don't have to, but I would usually recommend doing it. At the town it's, meeting? Yeah, it's, it's typically easier because the clerks and everybody's all kind of set up. When we, yeah. do, when we do the, you can do, you're right, you can do that vote kind of any time. Mm -hmm. um, you typically don't get a very good turnout when you do it off either, you know, the November or the March, you know, town meeting. So. Yeah. But yeah. That's, again, that's a select board decision. It, it's at your pleasure. Getting into the, yeah. I think you were kind of talking at it at the beginning of the meeting. There's a bunch of requirements as far as what the public meeting requirements right. are. So with town meeting, it usually is pretty convenient because you have to do all those for town meetings. So if you layer this on top of it, it doesn't, yeah. you don't have to manage two schedules as far as sure. our paper went out, we got our public notice out, and then a month later, you're doing all the exact same stuff for, for public notice. Um, yeah. That's that's another, it kind of just saves a little bit of the overhead on that as well. Okay. 
And if, and for example, just if you, so the USDA application has to go in by the middle of December. Mm -hmm. If you do a bond vote in March, again, you have to have a positive bond vote before they can issue a funding offer. So that's mm -hmm. gonna take you three or four months. So if you are eligible and deemed for a USDA grant <clears throat> loan, you're probably not gonna hear that until so. As Jeff said, it was gonna make it difficult to get much under construction next year just the way the, way the funding lays out. Sure. To fully answer your initial question, Wayne indicated these quickly, we typically provide a, a flyer to help with <coughs> assistance and we usually will come down and conduct an in-person question and answer session. We'll set up a slideshow where we'll walk through the right. components of the project and have any any questions or answers. Um, and, and we're happy to accommodate whatever you guys would like to do for that as far as getting the public involved and getting the public aware yeah. as far as the project is. And maybe if we could even, you know, we'll see as we go along, that might even be something like we could do just um, more than once and we could do it remotely. I mean, you guys wouldn't have to be here. You could just, we can share the screen. Maybe we do it in December or something like that just to start it. I just, sure. I, I, I just think that, you know, more than March meetings are going to be tough meetings, whether you said in a select board or school board and, yeah. you know, information is power. So we're not trying to hide from you guys. We're no, 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 I, I, I'm not us. It's not us. I'm taking yeah. beyond these green walls. Um, and then do we have an updated cost for sludge or? We have not touched those numbers okay. since then. I haven't noticed any seismic changes since we last talked about this would be my update on that one. Okay. Any other questions about the wastewater treatment facility updates? The lead. So, yep. So, are you just to understand what's going on with the lead for the step two? So, you guys have a couple of things there. You have a step two engineering service agreement for us to actually provide those final design engineering services, and you have an SRF funding application. I think are the two things that are in front of you guys to apply for funding for that. Um, as far as if you'd like us to start getting working on those, I guess just for clarity, are you planning on? executing those or is that something that you guys would like to discuss further as far as is there any information we can help to have you guys deliberate that or move well, those I have done services the forward? agenda tonight to get it perfect so that, that makes sense yeah. so yeah. just a reminder on the engineering fees you qualify for 50 percent subsidy up to a hundred thousand right. dollars for that phase yeah. that's correct you need to explain that to me, yeah so. good um Let's, so I, I, I just wasn't trying, to, wasn't trying to jump backwards. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just wanted to kind of get my own head exactly what was going on there. Cool. So I just think a little bit about the lead. Um, I know this. I mean, this came up over probably a year ago when Michael was still here, and then it just kind of fell off the table. Um, you know, just a little more clarity. Like it, everyone, it's required that you're in every so everybody's house. Is there an option that people can? take a picture yes. and, and and share that information. There's a place to upload that. Yep. So here, here's the here's the spiel on the lead service inventory. So okay. um, yeah, the EPA came out with a requirement that every community water system in the country develop an inventory of every water service connection in their system. So Proctor falls under that. And what has happened is there's a, there's a deadline that is being put in place by the state to create these inventories by October 16th of this year, October 16th of 2024. And so what the requirement is, is that we, or that the town documents the location and the material of every everywhere where somebody connects to your water system has to be documented in this very specific state formatted spreadsheet. Um, it's a pretty heavy lift. We've, we've been working with a lot of different towns on this as far as getting all the information entered in. We typically approach this by first getting a list of all of your customer users um, and, and entering them into the spreadsheet and getting all the, the basic information about everybody that's in your system kind of documented. These are all the these are all the users. And then we look to follow that up by supplementing with what their service material is, or when I say service, the pipe that connects to the water system, what that pipe is made out of. And so what the requirement is as far as us getting eyes on it is not the requirement. The requirement is that we make an effort to get that information from everybody. What we typically do is we'll start off by sending an, a survey to every one of your water system users. Um, there's a QR code on the survey where they can scan it and we'll direct them to take a picture and it will say, what is your water service? And if they just enter the material, that's 
ideally. Um, that's the easiest way. Everybody's self inventorying would be great. We've noted that the rate of people completing that is maybe 11%. It's not the highest in the communities that we've been helping out so far. So um, ideally, if we can push that as hard as possible, that's, sure. the, that's the easiest way to do it is the self inventory. Um, and then on, on there is instructions as far as like, we don't expect people to know what they're looking at. So there's a, there's a really easy scratch test, magnet test, mm -hmm. and um, thumping on test to kind of help them determine what the material is. I'm sorry, Albert, what do you got? No, I just wanted to back up. I just want to make sure that I have a clear understanding about what service line inventory is. Yes. yes. It's just your concern with the material makeup of the line coming into the house. That is correct yes. on, this, on this survey. Yeah. Okay. And so this stems from the Flint, Michigan crisis where the water system had this lead leaching out of those, those service lines was the major problem. So in response to that, we're creating this national inventory of, of wherever there's lead anywhere, anywhere so we can come up with a remediation plan. Um, so so, so how way. do they come up with the remediation plan if... That was to be determined. Well, be no, 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 no. My question is... If it's only the pipe that's coming through my cinder block into my house, how do you know what the water is running through the, the service line, service line inside someone's house? I, I so, mean, great overall question. From this perspective, from the perspective care. of this, they only care about the <laughs> Um For the individual homeowner, it'd be great to know if you have lead in your house and be aware of that. But. Um, because it's interesting when guys, the program yeah. was first sold to us, it, we were told that if people had lines that were like that in their house, that part of the reporting was that there was going to be funds available to help people remediate that in, in your home. So I'm either not it's of the so, okay. Not so, that, yeah. but that that's yeah. up to where it comes in. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yep. What kind of yeah. uh, you was you're talking about remediation, and I was just wondering the results of this survey could it uh, lead to mandatory remediation, or that is so that's likely yes. they haven't fully said what they're going to do, but it's likely that it's going to be everybody's going to have to replace lead or and, and up to and including maybe even galvanized mm -hmm. steel because that can capture lead if you have lead in and, and kind of store it for a while. So. Um, good news is a lot of grant funding that's going to be available to that, but that's that's to be determined. But we, we anticipate that that will be funded, but we haven't seen that hasn't been actually announced yet. For now, we're just creating spreadsheets that we have to create, and then we're going to move on. Um, so there's the survey is the is the number one option. Number two is if you guys have any town records, um, some towns have put in meters, um, and if there's any internal documentation that we can take advantage of. Water operators are our best friends. They know any any house built after 1989 is not going to have a lead service line. That was when it was when it was prohibited. So um, if we can not document that this was built after the state and does not contain lead, then that's another another useful avenue. And then finally, our final step is kind of the the, the knocking, calling on doors, getting into people's houses, and trying to get these things documented as far as what's there. We can't go multiple times to try to document sure. this. This is going to be a best effort. Um, best effort kind of situation. Um, the agreement that we pulled together includes a certain number of hours for us to do this on a not to exceed basis. Um, that is the, the biggest wild card as far as how much time we're gonna have on site to kind of get door to door and kind of help with that. Water operators are gonna have to help us out with this. This is gonna be something that is kind of a team effort between us and your water system to try to get this one done. Um, and so that's, that's the program, that's why we're doing it. That's kind of what's necessary help you guys out and to kind of make this work, the state is offering this funding as, as, as fully reimbursable grant funding. So up to $100,000, it will not cost you guys any anything to do for, for us to help you out. Our service agreement is under the $100,000, so we, we don't anticipate this will actually cost the town any money for us to help you with. Um, you will also qualify for additional money over the 100000 that's reimbursed at 50%. That may be paid back over five years. So if you, for whatever reason you end up bringing in additional people or anything like that, you, you have additional funds that are sitting there that have been allocated to you. Um, in order to tap into those, there's the, the, the application, which I sent along to Judy um, to kind of apply for the program and form their request those funds. Um, 
So that's why we're doing it, that's kind of how we're doing it, and that's kind of what it's going to cost you guys. That's how, that's how it's going to be paid for. Um, as far as timeline on this one goes, it's due by October 16th. We are not taking clients usually at this point right now. Sure. We agreed to help you guys out, and we're currently working with you guys on the asset management, which is why this is going to be a pretty big lift to get this one going. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have to get the hard ground running pretty hard on this one. Um, like if we get under agreement, I would anticipate hearing from me like within a month telling you that we have a survey coming out. Um, like we're going to be, we're going to be hitting you guys pretty hard. Um, no, that's good because I know Public Works wants to get going out of the way too. So we're going to be asking you to start putting the customer list customer together, list together yeah. And, yeah. and getting any record. Yeah, digging right. through any records you guys. Want. So how would it be recorded? So let's say the town upgrades a line. Yep. It's copper coming in, but they're but it's coming into a galvanized line. How's that recorded then on the sheet? Copper? Fair, fair question. So it's recorded as the material that comes into the, so there's there's actually two, there's actually two cells on the form. There's one that's service in the street and then one that's service in the house. So we would actually have copper entered in one area and galvanized in another area um, mm -hmm. is what that spreadsheet looks like. They did just change the spreadsheet not that long ago, and I, but I'm pretty sure they would have kept that. Um, you guys will be on the new spreadsheet. <laughs> So the state has developed this template spreadsheet that everybody is using. Mm -hmm. um, you have to fill out all the required <laughs> items. There are some non-required items, but we're all using, every community, every water system is using the exact same template spreadsheet. So. But if we took a picture in this building and uploaded it, we don't have to be able to tell you you're going to look at the picture and deter or I would appreciate if we've been playing detective a little bit, but yeah. um, included, and I have, I have an example like sharing my computer. Um, we have a how to tell what your water service line okay. is. It's a one sheet. It has color pictures. It's pretty clear. Um, and the, the request is please indicate what your service material is. Okay. If not, I'll reach back out. And, and is there a percent? Is there a threshold percentage that you have to reach if there's an issue and you are mandated to remediate to receive funds? Not that's been announced at this time. No. Like at this point, the the expectation from us is that they will be giving us funds to remediate. Okay. But that is fine. That is not set in stone. That is our expectation based right. on bringing the leaves. I think recently they allocated another X billion dollars towards lead remediation. This is a, a high priority for everybody. But Lisa, back to your question about the wastewater, it's also important to get the word out to people, you know, your water system customers from a PR kind of thing too. So they kind of understand a little bit about what's going on, what they may be asked to do. Yeah. Um, so this is good from an educational opportunity to get the word out to people also. It's yeah, well, fun. I'm also thinking it's yeah. possible we might be able to get maybe high school kids to go around and do it because they all of them have phones. And <laughs> so... Yeah, you're very open. If you have a labor pool that's local... No, but I'm just thinking, like, you know, work. like, that might be an easier way to, to go around and they might... People might be more open to having, you know, a couple kids come in or something like that, take a picture, you know, it's good for yeah. that. So you gotta be really careful. Okay. Whoever's doing this needs to be clearly identified, have a certain, um, there's been issues with some of these in some communities about yeah. just some kind of random person, not, you know, you're letting potentially people into your home. Oh, um, no, no, no. important to yeah. make sure whoever is doing this and knocking on doors is clearly identified. Yeah, so yeah, aware of that. sure, sure. So, so. We'd be happy to work if you guys have yeah. people yeah. interested in getting that set up. But yeah. we, we'd want to make sure that we were... Yeah, I mean, we could figure something up so they're identifiable. But I'm just thinking in terms of the the time and community service. And it, it can all just kind of play together, I think. So that's what it is, why we're doing it. And yeah, I think, I think we covered all that. If, if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to. Okay. So is every community, every community around us is doing it? Yes, okay. 100%. Okay, all right. So once the list gets to you, all the users, what's the turnaround time for that survey, do you think? I'd probably be doing these activities concurrently at this point. Um, where once we get a list of people who are in your system, I, I will pretty much be getting a mailer out to them, will be my first step, and we'll okay. be pulling that that other spreadsheet together at the same time. Okay. It takes a lot of time to pull that spreadsheet together, and right. I, I don't want to wait for that to be done to get the other thing done. So okay. I'm just thinking in time, like in terms of this, and also the wastewater. Like if we had information as a flyer, we could send it out with July bills. So you know, so that cool. might be an option to reach everybody. Yeah. 
totally could. And we have in our budget, and more than happy to have you guys handle mailing, we have in our budget proposal for us to send a mailer out. Okay. Um, for, we have a, but very happy to, the postage is not oh, cheap, so we're very happy to coordinate. <laughs> um, but yes, that's that's okay. part, part of part of what you're getting as part of this package is a, mail, a mailer okay. initiated by us from, right. okay. from somebody local. But. They may pay more attention to it if I was really <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But, I get a lot of calls. The, the the line the numbers that are listed it's my phone number that's listed there. So if, if anybody comes, it's like when I, we first put these out, I was getting a lot of a lot of calls from a lot of different individuals. So it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? And that's up there to sign. I'll have you guys sign it after. Sure. Great. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Good enough. Appreciate your time. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you. Guys. Thank, thank you. Up. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, that list to you. Yeah, and we should be able to provide like when we did the water project that all of those have copper oh, yeah, coming yeah. in. So that's a huge section. So that would be a big effort to coordinate. I'll, I'll get in touch with Kyle. And yeah, I mean, it at least says that's what's going into the house. It may not be what's hooking into the house. Gary, when you guys at the water project, you took some of the services into the house through the basement? Yes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. We had to for that's some good. of them. That's all good. So. Hopefully there's some good records on this. That's great. Yeah. Any yes. new projects that yeah. were done are fantastic. Anything anything that's in that range saw it. I think that I need to I need to bug Kyle for more information. Here, so okay. I'll, I'll yeah. follow up with Kyle because we're trying to wrap up your asset management project right. as well. So okay. once we see what you have, Judy, for your list, you know it may not be that we don't send the mailer to everybody too. Like right. if there's in neighborhoods of a certain age, or there's we've got a list of people at pretty sure. So right. we can pair the list back. Right. A and we have time. a lot of users that aren't homeowners, you know, they're renters, so they it, it would be on the mailing list. You know. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Bye bye. Good to see you guys. All right. Moving on. Uh, bills. I don't think. No bills this month. Okay. So we'll pass them down. I guess I, I don't know. Well, we can do that at the end. Yeah. All right, status on 2651 West Street. So I reached out to Elderson to see if the homeowner had gotten in touch with them, and he said no. So I sent them another letter, I mailed it to them, and I've gotten no response. So so we have, they haven't taken any action. Um, they didn't take the initiative to contact them to find out what it would cost to even remove the stuff. So I think, um, and if everybody's against it, just say we think you're completely out of the loop. Um, I think we need to send a certified letter to the property owner and say that this is what it is, they're in violation, and they have X amount of time. Um, I, there are um, property owners over there that have... Um, express some concern that it's been allowed to go on this long and I think they've been understanding of the process but I think that we need to um, I, I just think next step certified letter property owner outline you know what it is we, we've done our due diligence well yeah but I that's something I think we can track right. down um, but that's who we've got to contact that that's the person we've got to start with right. and then because if we we can't go on and do anything till we have right. at least contacted them right. and so this has got to get yeah cleaned and up even notify that you know they're, they're in violation there is a deadline yeah they just ignored it so so I think um, we can work on finding the um, the property owners um, address any concerns, ideas, other direction? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we, we need to get, get, get it cleaned up. Yeah. And that way, once we do this, if we don't, if nothing happens and it does fall on us, then we've done our due diligence and we can, you know, then the lien can be put on the property and, right. you know, yeah. all, all of those things. But 
Um, I think we have to show some respect to the um, neighbors over there that have dealt with this for yeah. way too long. Yeah, yeah, I agree so. with you. They've okay. been great. I mean, I've talked to one of the neighbors yeah. consistently, and they've been... Yeah, understanding, but, right. you know, it's getting yeah. to the point where, you okay. know... I know. <clears throat> just because they don't respond doesn't mean that they shouldn't ha be held to the same standard. So, okay. All right. Um, timber harvest. Okay. So there's two things. So I put down there um, approving the um, contract, and then there was a, a the forest management plan for that piece of property mm -hmm. was executed in 2020, and no one ever signed it. So they sent it to me, and the state looked at it. They said everything's fine, and it's all in order and stuff. They just would like a signed copy on it because even um, Hutchinson had never signed it. So that I would like approved just as part of this whole. So that property is in current use, or yeah. it's, it's? It's in, this is the Florence property. Right. Yeah. It's just a forest management plan. It's different than the one we have up there yeah. because they don't have the... Re they don't have as much, um, we aren't restricted by them like we are up at Chittenden because we own this property. But this is just their plan as far as cutting timber and stuff. Well, we own the Chittenden property. Right, but there's also state, it's also state property on there too. It's, it's out of town, it's not in our town. Well, that's what I'm saying. That property has to be in current use then. So is this property in current use or this property has what? That property is different because we own it. It's in our jurisdiction. It's in our town. We own Chittenden. It's not in our town. It's out of town. That's why they have that restrictive um, yeah. management plan that we have to abide by. The rules don't apply here. So anything up in Chittenden gets cut, harvested, that money goes to water. This money doesn't have to. It's different. It, we can treat it differently. Right. The restriction is, though, that that property is in current use. That, Florence? It has to be, because that's how you pay your taxes up there. Oh, you mean up in Florida? In, in Chittenden. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. if it's not in current use, then you're pulling, paying full taxes. So it has to be in current use. It's no different than the library's property in the town of Proctor. Forest land is in current use. Right, but this is but, all about Florence. But yeah. that, part of that property is in Pittsburgh, or Florence. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my question. Is this, this is a... Because it's written like that. Okay. I, I, so you pay full taxes to Pittsburgh then? For their portion of it? Yeah. I don't know. Full taxes. And they also agree, I mean, we can cut timber on that Pittsburgh property. Yeah. Right, but in his, in his, in his things, it says timber marking on the 109 acres of land. Right, because he's not going to mark the whole acreage. There's over 300 acres there. Okay. So, but from this, this is broken down into stands. So, we don't know what stands he's... He's marking all around because the tree, it's not like, like 25 acres, 50 acres are all maple. It's spread throughout. So, he's yeah. marking certain ones depending on what the age of the trees are, the condition of the trees, how tall they are. So, you know, if he cuts... The tops and you know so undergrowth can grow better and stuff like that so that has nothing to do with this that has something to do that was done four years ago and never signed and that was just the management plan but it still you know kind of describes and everything about the property that nothing's changed on it in that respect so that's just agreeing that we, they have a plan there and that they're overseeing it this is has just to do with the harvesting the timber harvesting Okay. I would have an attorney look at it. Oh, yeah. and we don't need to have an attorney look at it. But this, this is... One question I would have, Julie, 20, is, you know, Joe's proposal 42. here, 
Is that conforms with the forest management plan, or is that something other than what yeah. was included yeah. in the forest? Yeah, in fact, his name, he, yeah, his name's on there now, too, on that plan. It's just, it's a plan for them to basically yes. yeah. supervise the forest, and then this contract here is to specifically go in and mark and harvest those timbers this yeah. year. And I'm sure once he harvests that, that would probably be updated because whatever he has there for certain areas. Well, this is only the 109 acres of land in Pittsburgh, not Proctor. So that, that was my question. This is only Pittsburgh proc property. Okay, so now not, 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 not 300. No, okay. So, which is but, interesting because he only delineates 109. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. And that's a, that's a starting point, he said. You know, I mean, we can harvest more later, but he just wanted to do 100. Okay. What is the pleasure of the board? I would like the opportunity to look at the forest management plan and make sure that this proposal is in compliance with so the you know, because I know the Chinton, you know, we had that forest management plan, and it was broken down in all the, the lots, and then it referenced material or information as to what was going to be done in each one of those lots, you know, and the time frame that it was going to be done in. Right, and it you, never you know, and <laughs> that well, because of yeah, and with this, you know, I'm reading Joe's uh, proposal. You know, I would just like to be able to say yes, we're going to go into plots, you know, one, two, three. And this is what we intend to harvest, you know, the maple, the oak, and... So you're not going to see that because that property is in current use. They're only going to cover 109 acres of the land that's in Proc or in Pittsford. There's nothing for the land that's in the 228 acres in Proctor. Okay. Yep. Then I don't have to worry about uh, oh. so, whether this conforms to our forest yeah. management plan. So that's moot yeah. so for this yeah. harvest, so... Yep. Yep. So a motion would be in order to approve the timber craft forestry contract. Motion to approve. Okay, second. Okay, so I can sign it. Okay. Yeah, I'll grab this question. Yep, go ahead. Open for discussion. Sure, go ahead. Just that last sentence. The town of Proctor also guarantees the accuracy of the property boundaries on its parcel in Proctor. Is that just for his protection, or is that something we actually will verify? Well, that? that's for our protection. As you've noticed going through the legislature, I'm sure that people are not harvesting on other people's property. Yeah, but so. we do have an accurate... Well, we uh, have a map. Maps, yeah. Maps. yeah. We do? Okay. And yeah. that's part of their, I mean, part of his job to know where the line is when he's marking trees. Yeah. I mean, we're paying him for that mm -hmm. service. But he's also asking in that same sentence to be relieved of any liability. Well, his company, yeah. yeah. So it's okay for me to sign this contract? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, we had it. We had Motion and second idea. Yeah, we didn't. Well, well, we haven't voted yet. Yeah. All the any other questions? And once he marks them, that contract should come back to this board with the recommendation from him, uh, with the logger. So he should take loggers out, show them what he's harvesting. They should bid. He should send to Judy. What the bids are. What the bids are with his recommendation. Yeah. Okay? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You need a motion for this, or you already had a motion and no, nobody I, signed I it? Wanted, I, it was raised as part of this, but I wanted signatures on it for the approval to be able to sign it. They want to sign copy. So you want us to re approve this? Yes. Okay. Um, so a motion would be in order to approve the Proctor Town Forest. Property in Pittsburgh, Vermont, Forest Management Plan for 2020 to 2030. And sign. Motion to approve. Second. 
Any questions? Even though it was approved four years ago. Well, but it's different people signing okay. it today. And then did he give you an idea of when he was going to be marking and doing all that? No, I think once he gets this agreement in place, I think he wants to probably start as soon as he can, at least going up marking. He has gone up there at least and looked at all the property and decided where he's going to, you know, what he's been looking okay. at. And basically just so you, the contract that he, like if you had questions on there about the breakdown, the percentage that of the timber and stuff, mm -hmm. that's the way we've always done it. The contract with Hutchinson before was the exact same. He took a percentage of all the timber cut, and by the what was ever um, paid to us in the end, he took a percentage of. So he wants to remain consistent with that. Yeah, but he's getting paid simultaneously with the town in this. He's being paid. He needs to be paid up front for the markings. He's being right. Paid that's after different. The, yeah, after but the harvesting. With the harvesting, he's getting paid on the same payment schedule as the town of Proctor. Right. And that's the way Hutchinson did it. Okay. They did it quarterly. So we were billed quarterly, and the um, forester took a percentage of that quarterly invoice. Of the timber sales, not yeah. the stumpage. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, cleaning Commission ordinance on short term rentals. Did this go, this is going through the, and was approved through the legislature, right? The, About how they're going to require. Um, I don't know if it's gotten the final vote or not, because there was some discrepancies in it. Well, they, they, they plan on using part of the funding through education. So there has to be some mechanism for them to be able to track. Right. How people are doing it. So but I think they left it up to municipalities too, and how they were to track it. To, oh. well, well, how they were going to treat it. Oh, okay. So how was this form? Was this the state's? No, no this is our planning commission did this. Oh, oh, okay. Based oh. on other towns that have them. Oh, okay. So I guess my question, was just like with permits and like that, if the state's going to require. They're going to charge short. Yeah. How this works in our community, I guess. Right. Can you, I don't know, I guess double dip, so to speak. I'm not sure because I haven't read that. I just know that it's on the education piece. So, um, but I haven't read the final part of that. So, well, I know part of it was that. Um, to basically, you said fund the education um, budget. They wanted to like um, tax higher, like for second homeowners, Airbnbs, increase those rates. Yeah, you know, get money. And our legislature wanted to pull that from there and not charge Airbnbs anything. Right. And then others said, no, we should. And I think what they've come up with is actually charging them more. So the last time I saw the bill being passed, so yeah, and so and that was included in that bill. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we should just wait till we see what comes what out of is, yeah, that. Otherwise, if we put in all kinds of restrictions, yeah, and, guidelines, and they'd right. say this is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. look. Is that okay? Just to yeah, wait and let's... see what that. Yeah, I'm just keep. Because it in the well, yeah. by yeah, June. I don't mind if it's if it's. I'm in agreement if it's Airbnb or second homes or something and they're taxing it and funding it and that money's going back into the municipality to yeah. help with their education right. tax. Yeah. Not going into a big pot like all the other things. Well, everything state, goes to Montpelier. Yeah. It goes yeah. to, you know, uh, Aston County and Chittenden County. And, well. Yeah. But I know I've got a lot of issues with this document. This, a lot of it? That's, yeah, that's in front of us. Yeah, well, what would those be just out of curiosity? Uh, the first would be on page four, short-term rental administrator. It lists uh, duties for the short-term administrator. The first three pages of this document are the uh, short-term rental unit registration form and instructions. Yeah. The last three pages of this uh, package is an ordinance. Uh, are the ordinance. Yep. Right. You know, and in, in, in the ordinance, it talks about the short-term rental administrator. You know, yep. roles and responsibilities, which yep. is good. You know, now look at the page in front of it. 
page three, and you look at important contact phone numbers. Yep. The S short term rental administrator, you know, you put that person's phone number in. Yeah. And it says, you know, that it's most likely going to be the zoning administrator back yep. on page four. But you look at the third bullet in that uh, phone number contact. STR coordinator, Proctor Zoning Administrator, and then question marks for the phone number. Yeah. Uh, where does it define what a, you know, the short-term rental coordinator is? It defines what the short-term rental administrator is, his roles and duties, but what's a short-term rental coordinator? They list them both in that block. Well, I think it's because they took multiple. Yeah, I think what it you was. Know, I think one of them should be scratched. Yeah, well, I, I, I think when, it, when they met and they talked about this, they got to the point where they had just kind of done a draft and then a lot of things overlapped, a lot of things didn't make sense, yeah. and they changed it. And instead of going further and rewriting it and then having you guys look at it and rip it apart and then rewriting it not, again. I'm not ripping it apart. Oh, no, I'm no, just no I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If they went and made 10 changes and then you went and said, oh, no, we don't want those changes, we want these 10 changes, they felt it was better going to the board first because you have the final say and you guys look at it and mark up what you think is not good in it, what is good in it. And that's probably one of the things right there is why do we don't need a coordinator and an administrator. Right, right. You know, and so combine them as one. But I think part of it is they anymore. melded different ones together. They didn't yeah. okay, write which is fine. This is copy and paste. Call it out. Well, then, you know, yeah. in the end, I'm going to have to well, then, say something. Right. So. That's why I think it's a good idea to wait. I mean, wait, but also take these copies and mark it up. Yeah. Yeah. And see what the state's going to see. I mean, I honestly find it very... Yeah. Like over. Well, I don't think you're going to get the state of Vermont Fire Marshal to offer CO for every. Um, no. Air but you, I mean, it's yeah. We we don't have the luxury <laughs> like the cities do. You know, they yeah. they have someone to go and give COs and. So I guess I would. I think we should just wait and see what comes out of the legislature and see if they have something rather than. See what yeah. compares yeah. to this. Maybe, Judy, you could just let the planning commission know that I have at least seven okay. or eight items. All right, yeah. definitely. You know, and, you know, I'd be glad to go to one of their meetings and okay. share it with them. Okay. You know, just to see if some of them... So let's, the let's table this into our second June meeting. And by then, maybe uh, what's happening up in Montpelier will have um, flushed itself out. <laughs> Literally, maybe. And their next meeting, Albert, won't be until June because Yeah, they, that's fine. That's fine. They have just tomorrow keep night, going. but it's a special meeting just to go over something yeah. about the regional plan. You know, it's just like renewals. Right. I assume that you're going to have to, it says that we're going to have to renew every two years for those short-term right. rentals. You know, is there going to be a fee? Is it going to be, yeah. you know, I using mean, the I same form? Uh, who initiates it? I, I mean, there's many things. people that, writing books on this stuff already and how to <laughs> set up a... <laughs> You know, second homes or Airbnbs, and it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. In fact, it's come to that. It's ridiculous. But. Okay. Uh, dam inspections completed on 424. Yep. So I haven't gotten a report back from them yet. I reached out to them again saying, when will I have a hard copy? Um, but they said really nothing's changed since the last time they were here. The dam inspector said that? Yeah. The engineer. <laughs> They said, I mean, they said they, they're pretty much the exact same. There's nothing more to report. Okay. They're still in poor condition, but. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're, once you're in poor, where else do you go? Without spending money, nowhere. I mean, I, I would yeah. think the pond would be the easiest fix, but I don't know. The reservoir they've talked about, even like just letting it dry up. Well, then, I guess worry. it'll be interesting to see what they put in for recommendations, right. and we'll deal with that when it comes. But at least they put us early, early on the list, so. Yeah. Uh, highway annual financial plan, FY24 to FY25. That needs a signature, and it should be, I don't know if it's really there. That's just something that they, you submit quite early on, and then they finally get it back to you, so. I just want the signature. This is water. Water. This 
It looks like this. Is it? Well, there's no, these are all water yeah, things that are in there. Okay. Yeah, that's not the yams. I need those signs for you. Okay. So a motion would be in order to sign the highway annual financial plan for FY twenty four, FY twenty five. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes unanimously. I'll just send this down to. Lisa, before we move forward, can we just back up to one item? Sure. Do what? Five. It Five. said needs board approval for service line inventory grant application. Is that something we have to vote on or? That's what you did vote on already. Yeah, we're just going to sign. We have it to I sign. there to sign. We did it at a prior meeting. Oh, okay. And now they, they have them here, so. Okay. Yep. We'll send them down to sign. Well, the inventory one is the one he talked about for the lead. Yeah. So we need the grant application approval. All right. Uh, motion will be in order at 657 to move into the Board of Water. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, delinquent shutoffs. So I have updated the list up until today. We, um, as of Friday, we had several shutoffs for this Wednesday, and we've had some people come in and pay. So the list is updated as of right now. Um, and right now I have four, five, six, seven that are looking to be shut off on Wednesday. Because they have no, they haven't made agreements. They have no agreement, or they made they made payments. They made an agreement, but didn't follow through with it. And do all of those have um, available curb stops? Yes. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Any and questions? I have a feeling when they go out Wednesday that some people run in. Okay. <laughs> um, say the fifteenth. Is there a certain time that these are going to get done? Um, they'll probably start on them like in between eight, eight and two. Okay. I didn't know if they had it till five p.m. They get uh, no. deadline no. on the day. Because we don't. We just try to shut them off like Wednesday, Thursday, not Friday. Right. So that they kind of come in. Right. All right. Uh, water sewer rate update. So there's a um, draft sketch in front of you. Um, I think the goal for this year, in light of everything that we've kind of dealt with, is to make sure that everyone's paying at least one, right? And then um, people that are already above that, i.e. the schools or other institutions, we're, we're certainly not changing those. And then after July 1, let's say September, to make a list of um, businesses and you know go and look and have a meeting and say, like, I'll say next door, for example, like, What's happening over there? How many employees are there? You're currently at a one. We put you at a one when you came here before you were operating. And then, you know, ha have some questions and come back after we've done that with a number of them. And, you know, and, and we can decide as a board who and where we think, you know, we need to go look or meet with businesses or different things and then create like a tiered flat system. So everyone pays one, right? At the beginning, everyone's paying one no matter what. And then based on the schools, we know they're paying X because of the number of people in there, right? And then we had talked about before, like, you know, one to 10 employees maybe stays at a one and 10 to, 
20, maybe that becomes like 1.5 or something like that, depending on what that information looks like after we go and meet and look. But I think that um, a lot of these businesses, if you know you were in another community, you would be paying more than what essentially a residential homeowner is paying. But I think the first step is making sure everyone's at least at a one, that no one's paying <laughs> less than one. Right. Yeah. Because, and, and I think we, you know, have to make a list of businesses and reassess all that because we have these buildings that are changing use and consequently the changing of use then is changing how many, you know, how, how much they're being charged. And that's going to pass on to us and if we're talking about going to bond for sewer, that then is going to, you know, those fees are, will pass on to all of us. So does that seem reasonable going for, for July 1, that um, basically we would just write this up, that um, everyone is, I don't know, I guess at a, a flat fee, um, unless you're already assessed above that or and then the second piece is we'll have to redo the ordinance Albert? definitely but that's what was going to be my question <coughs> next year now somebody looks reads the ordinance and then gets their bill and looks at this or the the, the rate sheet and they try and come up with the numbers from the ordinance what's in the rate sheet and they can challenge it, you know, if, if well, the it ordinance, is reflective of what the ordinance is. You know, by going just this one year, yeah. I'm all behind you, you know, going forward. I think but, the key on this rate sheet is also taking out all of the gallons per day. I, there's I no, agree, yes. There's no way to measure that. So if you say mm -hmm. it's a flat fee, then you're saying it's an unrestricted um, I think having those numbers on the rate sheet kind of just set you up for a challenge. Not that, I don't know how, I mean, I guess someone could have someone come in and meter them or something just for a challenge, but um, it, it just, it doesn't seem like good practice because we have nothing to say that these numbers are viable in our community. So it seems like it's easier to set it up on employees or... Um, I think the, the gallon part was put in because of the state. Well, when you apply for a permit to build like a single family house, to have... Uh, when the permit comes to the town or the planning commission, they say, do you have X amount on your water system that can support you know, a six bedroom house that's gonna be so much. So, I mean, but those numbers are really kind of arbitrary, so. But the state had, like that one, the um, thing you had from the state showing everybody, you know, individual residents, everybody, um, like businesses, they were all lined up and, you know, labeled. They had 450 gallons per, like, a single resident. But and that I think that's where they pulled it from. Yeah. The state regulated that, so they took the four fifty and said that's what it's got to be. Yeah, but um, yeah, a lot of places don't use that number. That's the permitting number. So if you go on and read a lot of the other ones, so I just think it needs to be. I think less is better. I think it's. So I think it could just be confusing. the first paragraph. <laughs> right. Uh, for this year. I or, think for this year it should read like something like the rate. Structure is based on a system that has all the, those that use the system, i.e. water services, pay for the entire cost of the public drinking water system. Yeah, just from the first Users are billed the base rate plus extra fees for additional facilities and equipment or equipment. Yeah, and I think that's a piece then, the extra that we would do look at after July and get ready for the yes. following year. And it would address, you know, like you mentioned, the schools and uh, yeah. lots of marble for the coming year. Yeah. I just worry for the coming year. Right. So, I mean, we could get rid of everything and basically just rewrite the first paragraph for the rate and fee schedule. And just on the back part there, the water rates and charges, 
I just want to make sure the connection fees are three fifty and not two fifty. So oh, but that's in the those. ordinance. Yeah, but that's in the ordinance, right? Well, again, our ordinance says. But it says, says three fifty in here. Rates and fees. There's no reason not to leave the additional fees on that. Rates and fees. But yeah, those are three fifty. That's what I gave you guys. But yeah. this was it says oh, two fifty. Okay. Okay. But some of those fees are set by the state. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there the trip go. and yeah, the yeah. service. The only one that's not new service connection. I don't see why we can't leave those on the rate and fee schedule because it is rates and fees. Oh, yeah. Those sure. are fees. Yeah, yeah we you know, do. There's no negotiating there. That's I mean, just what, what they are. On. Yeah. The board signs yeah. off on. So. But I don't know. Like when we do that, when we set the rate. I mean, when we set the rate, then for um, FY25. When you look at that sheet where it says number one, is that something you think we need to leave all of that on there? I don't think you really need to. I would remove that. Plus that's what's going to be revisited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would just have um, flat instead of the base saying, rate. Because that's how it's yeah. referred to. Yeah. Should you on number one just put the base rate yeah. is going to be $530. Yeah. And that, that's just... And then take all that other stuff out of there. Yeah, that's what I would do, too. Okay. Because that's the verbiage that's used in the ordinance. You can also, I mean, that's rate. more like the residential user rate. You know, any businesses or non-residential yeah. can be calculated. Right. Okay. Okay. One of these days we're going to get that all worked up. It's a mess. All right. Um, any other business for water? Uh, motion will be in order at 708 to move into the Board of Sewer Commissioners. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, this is the um, revolving loan. Says. Yeah. That's for the wastewater. Okay. So um, a motion will be in order to sign the water infrastructure state revolving loan. Oh. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do any of us need to sign? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your name's all in there, so. Okay. So we, uh, I'll send these down after to make sure everybody gets them signed then. All right. Um, any other business for water and wastewater? All right. Um, move out. A motion will be in order to move out of the Board of Sewer Commissioners. So moved. 709. <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, you have the sheriff's report in front of you. Any questions about that? And the town manager's report. I did notice on here it was good because I called them about going on the entrance of um, the street coming in from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Because people were complaining about people going too fast, so he did, had patrolled it. So. We we talked about when we got when you got the um, solar one there on South Street that if we thought that was effective to look about getting one for East Street do, do we think that's something we want to look into doing? Yeah, we could. I think it, it does deter people. You know, they slow they do slow yeah. yeah. And I'm wondering, like maybe under VLCT, if one of those grants there might be something you could because yeah, it's a safety kind of grant maybe. I don't remember how much that something cost. All right, mm -hmm. you're up. <laughs> uh, let's 
So I had Aldrich and Elliot come and they um, went to the fire station to view their flooring because of the cracks in it and the uh, yeah. settling. So he came out, he backed, and I think I gave you all a copy of the report. Um, so he basically went through it all and he said there definitely is some um, settling and it seems to be on the north end of the fire station. He said there's three different options you could do. You could do some boring samples to get to see where the depth is and stuff. You can do the entire floor that basically reads any kind of hollow space. But he said it can pick up, like, you know, it, it could be a quarter inch. It could be three feet deep, depending on... Oh, the certain, void. Yeah. yeah. So he said, um, but it looks like it's definitely in that area. And there's also some... Um, tactics that you can do to kind of put boring in and put these insulation things in that kind of lift it and support the flooring there. But he looked at, I gave him all the drawings, he looked at all the drawings of the fire station and it is a um, quartz slab and it is a foundation all around so he said that was that was good at least. That's And the outside's not settling so the building's not shifting, it's not doing anything else, it's just in that one area. So I said I would bring it to you guys, bring it to the fire department too and just kind of review what he said and maybe next meeting kind of what your thoughts are as far as the best route to go because he said if you have somebody come in just to check the floor over and stuff to do the readings across he said you're probably spending at least he said you could be spending five thousand um, dollars you know but he said it, it could cost something and nothing is nothing's long term unless you ripped it up and did it all over again but he said it could just be everything shifting at that one spot he did take a sledgehammer around and he actually showed me the hollow parts and it actually went through the floor, like the floor cracked and it sunk down like that far. And you can tell between the middle and the north end, the floor has sunk about at least an inch, inch wow. and a half. So the worry is the heaviest truck is parked in that bay. So. I asked um, Kyle with me to open it up and stuff, and the reason it's parked there is because the building is the deepest there, and it has the longest ladder, so it fits in there. So, is it possible you can give us just an estimate of these options? Because, I mean, some of them they may sound great, but price-wise, that might right, right. change my right. perspective. And one is more of a quick fix to get us yeah. through and, and stuff, you know, instead of like long-term, but. Um, yeah, I can see if he, or if he could just give an give us a, yeah give us an estimate on the options and and the project. I mean, I think to have a, and then once we have those, I guess I would invite the fire department to come here and have a right. conversation because yeah. I think having two separate conversations doesn't make Makes any sense. sense. Yeah. We need to be, you know, in concert with whatever it is we're going to do. <clears throat> okay. Um, had complained about dogs off leash. Someone had fallen and went to the doctor. The owner was sent a letter, and um, I told them that they have to be contained at all times, confined at all times, when off their property. And um, the woman actually called me, gave me a totally different story than the other person did, who <laughs> got knocked down. So. It's one, one or the other. Um, nobody filed a complaint. They just want the dogs on the leash. And I did witness them the other day walking. And the dogs are actually very well trained. But they did have them on leashes. So uh, let's see. Um, I don't know if I raised this last time. I feel like it was. I feel like I spoke to somebody. But we had somebody at the pond staying there um, overnight. Um, contacted the sheriff, and the sheriff, kind of like. Um, Tried to figure out who it was, got a phone number, got names who were assigned to the car, um, couldn't find the people, people were returning calls. They would go down there at midnight, the car wasn't there, but like at five in the morning the car was there. So I think they were going in very late at night, or early, early morning, staying there a few days, and finally they did make contact and told them they could not stay there and they had to move on and they haven't been back since. So, so that's a good thing. Um, Steve Matowski is no longer mowing the Riverside Cemetery. Um, I let him know that the, um, our guys were mowing the flats of that and that he could mow the hill and the trim. He, if he couldn't do the whole thing, he didn't want it at all. So, so I went out and got bids and we hired meticulous mowing and they 
By the time I signed the contract, they were supposed to, they're on Proctor schedule for Tuesdays. They do all, everybody who they do in Proctor on Tuesdays. And this was on Thursday and I said, okay, definitely be over here Tuesday because it's getting high. And he emailed me Friday and said, we went over there and took care of it already. And they did a very nice job. So, and they're charging us um, a lot less than that. One bid came in at four, four forty-five every time they mow and he they came in at 250 and, and they mow they weed whack and they blow all the headstones too nice. so yeah. Yeah. and will they yeah. give us the option of a week that we don't feel it needs to be mowed to skip yeah it like if it's too do. dry or if it yeah if it's yeah, raining right. yeah yeah and if there's extra stuff we need from them they're charging us 65 dollars an hour so that's done by every time it's done or is it by contract it's every time it's done every time mm -hmm. mow once a week it's 250. Is there a two-year contract? Is it's a one-year contract. One they year. did a one-year. So. And I offered the other person, and I said, next year we'll vote to bid again, and you can, you know, he said he'd love to, but he said, I, I can't beat that price. So. Okay. so. All right. Um, contacted Bendig to do an apron on a driveway that was up on Park Street that there was issues with last year. Our guys went and packed it in a couple times and it just kept seeping in and stuff and there was an issue. So we got them to go up and do a full apron on there because I don't think it was done properly in the first place. And they, I went by there today and it's done. So they did that last week. Um, sent the consumer confidence report for the water to the printers um, the week of April 29th. I just got the proof back Friday and they're gonna print those. So I hope to have those out within the next few weeks once we get them. So they're probably at least a month, if not more, ahead of time, so. Great. Um, let's see. Attorney sent the response back to Zion today um, with the updates and the acceptance and a due date of June 15, 2024. The new phones are in place in the town and town garage, so we finally have caller ID. Um, so she doesn't answer when you call her. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, my phone's on the left now, so I'm trying to ring I'm always like going like this. It's like, oh. but no, it's it's great. So it's it's definitely helpful. And and you can re, you can um, like down at the garage, he can actually take that phone and he can send it to his cell phone. Yeah. So if he's away, you can actually take these phones, unplug them, and bring them home and hook them up to your internet and use them. So oh, wow. so they definitely have a lot more features than our other ones. I mean, we get voicemails like. Five hours after they were left. So. <laughs> yeah, very. Um, dump day went well. Um, I think maybe next time um, having somebody from the board down there to grab yeah. tickets, um, the permits, because we used to do that, and the guys are usually in the loader or something, so they can't be around grabbing tickets. But they said for the most part it was it wasn't that busy. It was pretty it was pretty good. They filled two dumpsters, but not fully. So. That's a lot less than normal. Yeah. Yeah, they were really good because I went down yeah. and they were, one was in the loader and uh, one was just helping take everything out of everybody's right, yeah. vehicles. So. Yeah. So when we do it again in October. Yeah. Maybe just at the gate. Yeah. You know, we'll to, make sure. Yeah. I was away this time, so it didn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, pool has the mats down and sand has been delivered to the beach area up there. They've been kind of cleaning it. It's getting filled up pretty good. Um, and Gannon's been up there too, doing a little <coughs> clean up around the, the pool and stuff. So um, they get the water line taken care. Of. Oh yeah, that's all done. Yep, yeah. that's on my bottom. Line. Yeah, <coughs> they fix, fix that too. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's underneath this one. It says Public Works uh, fill, uh, took care of the sewer line. Yeah. Uh, transfer station certification was returned. I started that this year. They returned it, it's all approved. It's good to 2034. Wow, good. So, um, I called Irving about mowing at the corner of Beaver Pond in West Street, because it looks terrible. And I also contacted 61 Main Street and told them they needed to mow, because it's against the ordinance for the length of the grass. And <coughs> she, they switched property, <coughs> again, somewhat. So I gave her names for mowers so she could call them, so. And what about the rocks? What's them? 
they haven't gotten back to me on that either. So I think that's a second letter to them with the deadline because that's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And particularly, like right now, everybody's walking. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, they've dilly-dallied long enough. I know. So, and, he, and I, t asked, I called him last week, the property manager, but he said all of a sudden things aren't coming to him. They're going to someone else in New York. So I contacted her, though, but she gave me her number and her email, so at least I have a direct contact. So. Well, I would call her and let her know, and then I would follow up with the letter, and it's too bad that they're disorganized, but that's not really right. our problem. <laughs> so, um, But it just looks cruddy. We have people coming through now because people are traveling, and mm -hmm. it just, you know, they need to figure it out. They can put one of those um, catch nets up there or something right. like that. I mean... I get it. It's going to be a costly thing oh, to yeah. to fix, but that's their issue. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I emailed Treasy today because they've left about four or five big chunks of wood on South Street when they cut the trees and when they. Um, took out the mulched it all yeah. so I, he said I'll get somebody over there to pick them up this week I don't know why they didn't take them when they did it all yeah. oh I thought maybe somebody there wanted it that's I know, why they mean, left but it most people left them so I'm like they're going to be starting construction it's like get them out of it mm -hmm. and then the pre-construction um, conference is scheduled for May 23rd at 11am with the engineers and the contract for the South Street sidewalk as long as we have a fully executed contract, which we don't yet because the bonds have not been received yet by the engineering firm. What was the time of that meeting? 11. 11. 11. Okay. That's a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. I do have this letter to share with everybody <coughs> if you'd like, just a copy, but it is, I don't want to share it with anybody else. Oh, well, can we share it in executive session then? Yeah, I wasn't going to go into executive session. Well, but if you share it in public session, then anybody has can request to have access to it. Okay. Well, it's no. not really. Well, it's attorney privilege. I mean, I didn't read it, but right. I would just... Yeah, he didn't send it as attorney privilege. Well, I would I just... I anyone can request it. it. So, okay. All right. Um, and that's it on my report. Okay. Any questions for Judy? All right. <clears throat> John. I have to know, how come the four tickets were not handed in? How come the what? The first? The first one, a lot of people said they, they never took them. So they went back and got more. A lot of people said that. Really? Well, they didn't even fill two dumpsters, so it couldn't have been too many people. Really? More than ten? Yeah. Well, that's too bad. So unethical, then. Yeah. <laughs> Did they offer to bring their money down here to the town office for the second trip? They had the, they had the tickets. They said. Well, that the tickets for one trip. Right. Yeah. And? and well, I said I could have made another trip because I had a ticket. No, I you don't have a ticket. No, you you you, you just said that people. Well, um, unfortunately, some of us had prior commitments and we couldn't be there to pick them up. But you know, there's also a thing called being a good citizen. And if you know that a ticket equals one load, whether I take the ticket from you or not. As a good citizen in the community in which you live, you should know that is all you're entitled to. If you go back two, three, and four times, nice. th that, that's an ethics issue for you, in my opinion. Well? This is a different world today. No, it's not a different world today, John. You either have moral integrity and ethics, or you don't. That was the world 50 years ago, and that's the world today. Saying it's a different world by allowing people to have a past because they think they get away with something doesn't change having moral integrity or ethics. So I don't really want to hear about people 
that think that they beat the system. That doesn't interest me. If that's their big thrill for the, for the year, that they got an extra load of garbage, more power to them. All right. Um, any other old or new business? The only thing I'd like to see on a future agenda, and it was something when we just did for the cemetery, something we used to do for the plumber or electrician. We used to go out to bed <clears throat> so that we had a town or a town plumber, town electrician. So if there's a problem here, problem at the garage or whatever, everyone's using the same one. There's no, you know, gotcha rate. So I think that might be a good idea to do that come July 1. Okay, just to go out for bid for plumber electrician? Yeah. So, like, you know, and in, so if something happens at the fire department, you know, th right. this this is who we're using. This is who the yeah. town of Proctor uses. So I think... Um, I think we did talk about that the last one. Yeah. We were talking about the fire department. Yeah. <clears throat> and we've done that before. Um, and then the other thing is, I think we're going to have to have someone look at that marble wall. The end of it, really, as you come to the intersection, is in terrible shape on South Street. Okay. <coughs> Before it's all in the street, I think we should yeah, look I at talked it. Yeah, to Public Works about that. Okay. So if they want to provide a report or have an engineer or something look at it, so we can figure that out. All right. Anything else? So um, at 727, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously.